going on, guys? Thanks for joining us with another Dent Digest live show. I have a special guest here, Mike from B and D Tools. How are you? Good, man. How's it going, Ryan? Uh, you know, another day here in uh, hot, hot Maryland. So, if you like to sweat, this is a state to come to. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. No, it's it's warm here. Um, I'm in sunny Southern California, and it's probably I'm kind of close to the beach. So, yeah, we're probably at a comfortable 85, 86. Not quite sure. Didn't check on the uh, on the weather today, but. It's warm enough. It looks nice. I mean, it's dark here now. So so I I, I, I want to recap a little bit. Last week's show, we had Daniel Grom on, kind of went through his history, um, kind of how he got into the industry and the motorcycle tank end of it, and just talked a lot about tool innovation, um, you know, how he helps a lot of guys come to market with this, some new tools and some ideas that are out there. So it was, it was a good show. There was a lot of good information. Um, one tool I did get, it was supposed to be here last week for the show last week. Um, like I explained on that show, I had one of these tools at, uh, Anson open house and I actually ended up giving it to Mike Toledo. And if you guys don't have one of these, this is a huge addition. This is Don Cavanaugh's, and Chad Peters, AHA, from Endeavor Dent Tools. And it comes with a nice little note in there with a signature. And like I said on my Facebook feed, now I can sign Don Cavanaugh's checks. Nice. So we're gonna get I a little bit checks. of we're gonna get a little bit of dent craft money. So but this thing is a super versatile tool. Um, you can pretty much anything with holes in it, you can thread these finger threads through, and it gives you a ton of, of crank. The other option you have is they give you this metal adapter. And like today, I used it on a blem tool that was a T-handle. So there's no holes in the center there. And you use this bracket, and you thread the bracket through, and it almost pinches it in the handle. So I like this because some of these smaller tools, I did an aluminum hood on a, a LS460 Lexus today, and I really needed the torque, but I needed a small tool. So this thing really helped me out a ton. So if you guys want one of Don Cavanaugh's signature series handles, you need to go to Endeavor Dent Tools. They're on there. Anson sells them also. And they'll be at the MTE show. So, um, so let's get into MTE a little bit. You're, no, you're going to have a booth I there. That out at, I actually checked that tool out at the Anson show. Uh, cool. It looked like it was made out of Delrin. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a good idea if you're looking it's hard to get torque off those ultra tools or the other tools with that open handle design uh that's definitely a way to get some torque if you're looking to move some metal definitely got his got his check signature right there too so you know we're gonna be signing yep. some checks burnt is it burnt into it like laser yeah it's like scribed in nice i like it so you're you're gonna have a booth at mte i understand we're at MTE. We're at booth 1712. Uh, we're going to be next to the big, huge Ding King booth. Um, kind of the first aisle you're going to walk down through the doors. Uh, I do suggest coming by. Ding King is giving away free beers. So. <laughs> well, we got a couple by. problems. We well, got Dent Guys in Vegas and free beers. That does not sound like we're setting ourselves up for a good, a good time. <laughs> That it's going to be a good time, and you know, it, I'm not sure how happy he is I am about plugging them and giving away free beers. But you know what, Todd, your beer is going to be gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah. there to keep it. So yeah. beer is going bye bye, and we're also giving away the coolie cup. So if there's some way to fit that beer into my coolie cup because it's not a can, you're going to get a uh, camouflage coolie cup with the B and D logo on it, and it's going to be our new logo. So it's a new it's the new limited logo. It's actually, it's not our permanent logo. Obviously, we have, this is our permanent logo, you know, the crosshairs uh, and the B&D logo. That's been our logo for our duration. Um, but we do have a limited logo that will be at this show and limited tools as well. So and it's actually a really, it, 
It's actually a really what? cool logo. That logo's I, I really like it. When you sent it over to me the other day to use it for the thumbnail, I was like, okay. Fits this theme that you're going with. Um, you know, fits the limited end of it. And it was just it's a nice touch. Yeah, actually I have a I have if you can see it. Oh yeah. I think you can see it. Is it backwards? I'm not sure. It'll turn itself around, but yeah, it's it's it looks good. So what it what it's kind of taken off of is a ranger. So the, the military, like a patch, the ranger patch, um, airborne ranger that is, uh, fit us well. We were able to put the B and D logo inside of that, where we flip the B around backwards and put the the D, obviously the right direction. Uh, it just it worked. I'm a military. I'm, I'm not never been in the military, but I. I love everything to do with the military um, and just thought it'd be a cool addition for the show. You know, go on so let's, that. let's get into you a little bit and then we'll get a little more into your booth and, and what we have going on. Um, I am going to mention that you were, you were nice enough to donate a, uh, one of your tools we'll announce at the very end of, uh, for the giveaway tonight. So, you have to tune in and you have to stay tuned in to the very end to figure out how you're going to win this tool. And you're going to win this bad boy. Look at that. It's the military edition. So like a Ranger edition, it's all of drab and black. It's also, we're going to be in, in personalizing it for you. So right in this area, we're going to put your name on it. So it doesn't walk away. That's cool. So that is cool. Nice and it, like we were talking earlier, it looks black, guys, but it's like an olive drab green. So it's definitely going to be different than his standard black um, color. So yeah, if I if you put yours up and you put mine up, I think you can kind of see the difference. Yeah, you can tell a difference now. I mean, it, it's bitching. In, in person, this thing's impressive. The color, it's just different. Um you know, we wanted to go to the show and have a theme. So I don't know if you want to get into that now, but uh, we just want a theme. You know, we want to theme the show and, and do something different and have something limited that, you know, you're walking away with something that everybody else doesn't have already. We've sold quite a few of these and, you know, people like to be different. So, that's And everybody I'm loves doing. limited stuff. The stuff that's super hard, super rare. Uh, someone won... One of Todd Todd Zimmerman and Chad's collaboration hanger, and they they laser etched engraved their name into it, and everybody loves that personalization of the tool. You Absolutely. know, even though half the guys, you know, you don't see them, but a lot of guys just like those touches. So it's you know it, it it's a nice touch. It really is. I mean, I've sent off uh, laser personalized laser. Uh, stuff to some of the guys in the industry and they love it they, they just know it's not going to walk away and if it walks away you're going to have to paint over it or scratch yeah. it off you know it just these tools walk away or you leave they them. do you know and it's 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 unfortunate but it does happen so let's let's get into bnd tools and into you a little bit um how did bnd tools come about how did you end up i know you pushed dents for quite a while and then um how did how did B and D come about? Uh, in the mid nineties, ninety six, uh, I was doing construction prior to that, and as you know, construction seasonal it's up and down. Um, you know, I'd work my ass off for a month or two, and then I'd be down for a month, struggling to pay bills. I had a friend that got into it. Uh, he was trained by. I believe he was trained by Dent Wizard. I want to say, I, I, I can't remember, but I believe it was somebody from Dent Wizard. Um, I love the Dent Wizard. They were, they've been around and still <laughs> are around. I do. A, I, I actually sell them a lot of product. Uh, they're good to me. I can't complain. Yeah. But, um, you know, this guy was making, I'm not going to throw his name out there, but he was making a lot of money. A lot of money. I was jealous. So, you know, I decided it's time for me to get some of this. So I went out and found a company I was willing to take me on. They said they had trained me. 
Uh, they didn't train me. They threw me with a tech. He threw me, you know, we'd go out to, we went, you know, we're close to Vegas. So we drive out to Vegas. Uh, when I say close, we're 300 miles away, but once a week we drive out to Vegas and go to the Mannheim auto auction. We also did Cade in Anaheim, but basically he'd go there, do 10, 15, 20 cars from one bank. And he'd throw me on a beater and say, there you go, go, you know, this is training. So, you know, we went and did, did that and I was poorly trained. It took me a long time to get going. And, you know, after a few months of doing it, the training started kicking in on, you know, and I started to get it and it was coming around and pretty much the end of the story, it, you know, obviously it took me a good year to really understand doing Dan and get, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to say fast. Uh, I was definitely not fast, but after a year I could, you know, I could do a thousand dollars worth of work a day if it was thrown at me. Yeah. You, you got the idea. You know what I mean? And that, you have and to... I know that's nothing to some dent guys or I can do a thousand dollars in an hour. Well, not on a wholesale car lot, but the know, other thing is that's... it's, is the technology that's out there now, Perfect example. This technology, okay? I used to hit the back edge of a door edge with a scratch all and a hammer to fix those dents. You know, I had a two by four and a big sledgehammer in my car. That's what I <laughs> used. So truck. it's kind of an unfair thing because the newer techs are learning much faster and the technology of tools is out there to make their job easier. Absolutely. You know, I mean, the, you know, tools like Dent Reaper, the A1 tools that yeah. weren't out, you know, with the techs coming out with their designs. Um, you know, we used for the most part, I used Dent Craft back in the in the 90s. Yeah. You know, I'd grab a to do a front of a door in a brace. I'd grab a 48 inch long point oh point ninety point oh nine three little tweaker wire from Dentcraft. I'd have to drill a hole in the side of the door yep. all the way to the front of the door and twist with it. We didn't even have whale tails. Yeah. They hadn't even came out then. And so when whale tails came out, out we were kind of like, aha, where were these things all our life? And mm -hmm. you know, that really started making life easy for us. But with the, with the new tools coming out, you know, today, it just, the reach and the, you know, the go going down into a brace is just so much easier where we used to scratch our head, you know, with brace tools and just, this is all I got. I got this 90 degree bent thin little tool. I got to go down a window and try to, you know, weasel this thing into a brace. And sometimes, it, you know, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. We always figured it out. We'd bend the yeah. tool around, do what we had to do uh, to get that tool in. But man, the new tools coming out. It's crazy. Are helping text quite a bit because access is, you know three quarters of the battle mm -hmm. if you can see the dent and now you can access it you can do the dent yeah you know, as long as you're accurate but i mean it it went on for a while we did you know i used to make because i couldn't afford to buy all the dent craft tools or all the a1 tools i was making tools out of my garage and you know i'd go get torsion bars a little trunk lid torsion yeah. bars and whatnot and grind tools and i'd go to over to home depot and buy the plastisol dip that was crap didn't really work <laughs> it was cold yeah you know we dip it in and let it sit there and drip overnight and then it'd peel off a couple weeks later you know mm -hmm. we got it done we were able to you know we were able to do dents and i i had to make my own tools because i didn't make a bunch of money back then uh, and that just kind of grew into the love for making tools uh, i i really got kind of fed up with uh, just so many guys coming in and thinking they're dent guys. I and, mean, you know, I'm going to my car lots and doing my routes and finding out that my cars have been pushed on already. I'm looking at them, you know, they've been hit three times hard. Uh, and now they're calling that a finished dent. And, you know, they're cutting my throat for five bucks. So, you know, back then we were doing 65 the first panel, 35 the second panel with a max of three panels. So you can max out the car. What is that? 130 bucks per yeah. car, which wasn't bad. I wasn't complaining. I'd go right up five, six, ten cars per car lot, and I was making some cash. 
but uh, you know as people started coming in and cutting my throat it just it got to a point i think we were having to do the whole car for 65 bucks Two. and and that was you know the used car managers i'm sure everybody knows used car managers they they want to <laughs> walk you to a special car out back oh and yeah one out back i gotta have you look at and if you it's the worst when you it, when you get the call and they're like hey i got one i need you to do as soon as you can right and when they when they always call you get there and you're like are you, you know I'm like, you're like are you serious come on the guy drove down the side of a guardrail you're calling me out friday night at six o'clock because you want this car to be on the line tomorrow and it's a freaking body shop smash yeah which which nowadays people are going i'll take that out you yeah know, for six seven hundred bucks i'll take it out and i get it they're getting paid the money to spend six hours on it or you know maybe maybe it's a thousand dollars six hours I, i'm not sure but a lot of people will do those dents now where we weren't doing them back then we were walking away from them unless we were mm -hmm. doing retail if i was doing retail i wouldn't walk away from it i, I wanted to, to capture that money and prove to myself that i could do a big smash dent yeah and uh, the, the stuff these guys are doing these days the big smash stuff is blowing my mind oh yeah it's you know, because I'm not doing it anymore. So I see these, you know, the Toledos and the Groms and whatever posting, maybe not Grom doing smash stuff, but, you know, I'm at Vince's or, or whoever's. And I see this big smash stuff they got coming in, man, and they're pulling that stuff out. Yeah, Bryce that, that's on a different planet. I don't know what gene that guy has, but I need to get some of that because, I mean, that guy's yeah, fixing stuff. A big, it's hard not to dimple a big smash panel. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's crazy. The work people are doing, you know, Don Cavanaugh. Oh, yeah. Uh, stuff I see him doing, you know, obviously he's posting live all the time. It's 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 phenomenal. I mean, it, and that's the wave of the future, though. That's where the money's at. And doing yeah. that, you know, trying to keep it out of the hands of a traditional body shop and taking in that big money on those smash dents. But, the, you know, the the insurance, they're loving it. They're loving oh, yeah. it not having to pay 2800 bucks. And they're only having to pay twelve hundred bucks. They can't give you the money fast enough. And I'm doing a ton of uh, push to paint, which I really don't like to do. But right. some of these insurance companies I, I have really good relationships with, and they're like, "Let Ryan push most of it out instead of putting a roof on." And I still make really good money on it. You know, I'm still making four, five, six hundred bucks on some of these push to paints. So the industry's definitely changed. Yeah, because you can push that fast. It doesn't matter if you dimple it or yeah. crack the paint. Yeah. You know, if you crack the paint, who cares? They're going to sand it down anyways. Yeah. I mean, that, that's great stuff. I mean, I I don't wish I was back in pushing, but I kind of wish I pushed. Back then, I, I was pushing what people are pushing nowadays. I wish I was in this era of it Yeah. because it's just so much better than money. I probably wouldn't have got out of it. The money's incredible. They're, you know, there's not bad money in making tools but if you think there's a ton of money in making tools and you think you're going to be the next dent craft <laughs> or a one or yeah ultra i'll call up the three biggest uh companies i know uh, not easy not easy no. to make money it's it's a very tough business and especially with all the little micro businesses coming up and it's uh, hard i mean i spoke they're making, to they're making it hard on businesses like mine yeah to make money. yeah uh, you know, they're stealing, and I don't want to say stealing, but they're taking away tools that we would be selling. Look at all that yeah. hair. Woo. I know, man. Look at that. Nice, man. Yeah. Still there. It's still there. Still there. Mine's, fade, mine's kind of doing the little isthmus effect. <laughs> so we got a little little harbors in here, a little isthmus. Nice. That's years of pulling my hair out trying to make tools. <laughs> so you... Started B and D tools. Is it? And we originally spoke. You and I spoke at Anson Open House. We were standing there eating some tacos that they had there. And are you're a full time machine shop? Correct. Correct. We're basically a glorified machine shop. Um, just like if you were to go to Dentcraft or whoever, that they're a machine mm -hmm. shop. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what they what they are. They're a machine shop. We do have specialty tools that we're using to make the rods. Uh, that a machine shop necessarily wouldn't have. They might have one small version of what we're using, but we have giant versions 
of these of sanders and polishing units and what we use to you know to remove a lot of material fast because that you know that's you know that's the name of the game when you're making rods is removing material now are you strictly paintless dent tools or do you machine other products out of there also like like kiko is they do other products and the paintless dent repair are, they, are you no, i don't know a lot about kiko um I would imagine they are mold manufacturers. No, they happen. actually, they buy their molds, actually. They buy them. Yep. Hmm. So they're okay. mainly I... just plastic injection. So um, he looked into buying molds and or creating it, and I think it's just more cost-effective for him to buy them. So. He's at 20%. Hopefully we can last. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would. I, I always thought maybe they're a mold manufacturer, and they figured out oh, we can make molds. Let's start making some molds because molds are expensive. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. He said some of those. I mean, can be thirty thousand. You know, forty thousand oh, for his uh, lifter. Yeah, that mold. That mold's probably. If I had to guess, I've had some molds made a twenty thousand dollar mold for that one right there, just for one part of it. Yeah, probably twenty grand, and I don't know how many different molds he has for that. He probably has three molds for that so he has the body mold the leg mold and then the feet the little uh like lock line looking little feet yeah thing. but yeah he's probably got 30 40 grand invested into just molds alone for that um, so you're strictly molded. you're strictly paintless dent repair tools we're there. pretty much strictly paint paintless dent repair tools um does it mean if somebody came to me with a project uh to machine something we wouldn't do it yeah i'm not going to turn down money if, if my machine's open uh, my machines, one of my machines are open, you know, we're not making money. So the idea is to keep the machine running. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we've made gun parts before. Uh, we've made motorcycle parts. Um, several different parts, you know, just different things, you know, as long as of we course. can handle it. We've done it before, so. And I've, I've, I've used local machine shops that do mass production on stuff. And I've needed some little things made, and they've always made it work. So I know exactly what you mean. If, if someone comes in and say, hey, you know, can you make this? They're not saying no, you know. Um, James Brown does have a question here. He's saying, what do you think the, the trend for this year coming up as in tools would be? Like, what do you see that's new that's out there that's going to be the trend? It's, it's obviously hard to say because a lot of you guys – keep a lot of this stuff secret until almost the week of MTE. No, I don't know. I don't know what's trending with other companies. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's hard coming up with new tool designs. Um, you know, trending. I couldn't tell you. I mean, I really don't know. Nobody talks to me about what's coming out. I, yeah. I talk to everybody. I mean, I talk to Dentcraft. I talk to sometimes A1, but they're typically just ordering some stuff from me. I talk to Hanson, Craig over at Hanson or Christina. Um, I talk to several different companies around the world. And they're usually just filling orders. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, they're asking for, you know, for me to fill an order. And nobody really goes over that with me. I mean, it is kind of secret. Um, they want to release this stuff at trade shows. Yeah. You know, and to make it a big surprise, like wait until you see what I'm coming out with. And, you know, I, I don't know what's trending. I'm sorry I can't answer that. It seems to be kind of the year of the handles. It does. If, if you notice the John Hiley handle, the Gorilla Grip, uh, you had just right there the Chad Peters. And I think you said Don Cavanaugh was in on that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we made the Viper skin, yeah, or the A1 tools or the Dent Reaper tools. Um, kind of the year that's what's been trendy this year was handles. Um, people are tired of uncomfortable handles, you know, with the standard bent, dipped handle that hurts your hand over. You know, you're using it over and over, and you're getting you're getting fatigue in your grip. So the handle's been very very popular this year. And that Viper skin handles really comfortable and really well made. And I don't quite understand how you guys are making any money on that tool, on that handle, uh, well, at the price point. 
well, I, I believe it's priced at forty nine dollars. Yeah. Each, um, that's not my price point. That's a retail price point. Uh, we made those, and then, you know, Craig, Craig from Anson asked me if he could be the only one that sells it, and I agreed to that. So he came up with that price point. Um, you'd have to ask him about that. I think it's great. No, I I think it's cheap for the what it is. Truthfully, that's what I'm saying. I think because I I understand. I understand how expensive machined things are. You know what I mean? If what you understand it, machining and how expensive machining things are, go ahead and, and look at it this way. When we machine things for the PDR world, we're not making thousands or tens of thousand units a year. We're lucky. Some items you're lucky to do into hundreds of units a year. Some of, some of our items we're lucky to do in the thousands it's not breaking tens of thousands so the the cost to make parts for this industry is expensive so it, it's i wish we were making tens of thousands of these <laughs> price would go down not not wishing because i want to make more money i mean I, of course i'm in it to make money but wishing it, it to drive down the cost i mean that true it i feel like the industry that everything's expensive in this industry and I wish it was cheaper. Uh, the only way you get cheaper uh, product in this industry is to buy Chinese product. I, I, I don't recommend it. Um, I've been sent every Chinese product from China on the space, the face of the earth. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why they keep contacting me that if they, they can see that we're a manufacturer, but they keep wanting to send me mini lifters and rods and then they send them to me and I get them and I just pretty much throw them in the trash. I actually don't. They're on my shelves, so I can show people how crappy they are. Yeah. But uh, it, it's – don't buy Chinese. Oh, <laughs> don't do it. Save your money. James Brown again. Did you push dance, and how long did you do so? Uh, I did push dance. I pushed dance for six years, I think. It was right around six years. So from 96 – uh, to 2002, I believe, is when I finally got kicked out of my garage for making tools in my garage. Some <laughs> like the porch going and grinding, and I got kicked out. So I just said, you know what? We do enough business. Um, we can just move this into a regular shop. My phone is doing weird things. Sorry about See, that. See, that, that, that's what I really enjoy. I enjoy the dent guy that started creating some tools – and finally take that step and bring it to market. It, it's so cool, man. It, it's We're very lucky in the industry to have guys like you that bring something like this that I use all the time. You know? Um, and this is one of my... I think this is probably one of my favorite tools that you make. Um, and if you guys don't know what these are, they're the... Uh, panel fender pliers and i learned this i actually learned last week that there's a difference from the fender pliers to the edge pliers do you want to explain yep. the difference on that so the edge pliers and i don't have any in front of me to kind of to point that's the panel plier. so the panel plier has a the mouth there the jaw is four inches deep the panel plier and it also has a 20 degree angle on the handles adjacent to the the jaws so you can see if you close them they actually go into a 20 degree so the panel pliers are, are made to go around in a fender where there's a wheel and that bend is to, to allow you to get in that fender without removing the wheel uh, also you can use those great place to use them is on like a rear tail light area anywhere where you can reach in an open panel those are great for with the fender plier or the edge plier excuse me they only have a one and seven eighths reach and they're really just the, the where he's putting his fingers in there. They have a much shorter reach and they're really just made for the edge of the panel. They're not made to reach in and, and go deep. Uh, and they're, they're flat across. So there's no angle on the handle. So when you're working on a hood or whatnot, it doesn't put your hand up in a, in an awkward position where that one would put your hand and up that, there. With, that's where the problem I have. Edge fires, you're, you're straight onto it. So, I mean, I know a lot of people have asked me, why did you make two versions of that? And that's the reason. It wasn't it wasn't to make a version one and then come out with a better one and 
with the version two. The version one is 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 perfect. It works really good for what it's for. And then that panel fender fire works good for open area dents, anything within four inches. Um, I missed that question. Somebody had a question there. It went away no, already. No, he, he was just asking, do you miss pushing? Uh, no. Don't miss it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I get to sit in my nice uh, air-conditioned office. I don't have to deal with uh, jackass used car managers that don't yes. care about you. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind dealing with retail customers. Usually, for the most part, they're pretty good. Uh, I've had a few instances where I've been bitched at for making four or five hundred dollars, and it only took me an hour to push their den out, and yes. I make more money than their husband. That's a lawyer. Uh, I've had that gripe before, and it's like, you know what? You figure out how to do this, and you want three or four hundred bucks an hour yourself. So yes, go pound sand. Yeah, I'm, give me my check. I'm leaving. Your car looks perfect now. I gotta go. You're but right. No, I don't. I don't miss it at all. Uh, I'm. I'm not trying to say don't get into it if you're looking to get into it or if you're in it. Um. I but I don't mind doing it. I love making tools. That's my passion is using my brain to figure out how to make the next aha tool. Um, I wish I had something groundbreaking that's totally new for the industry. I, I don't. Um, if you have any ideas, shoot me a, a personal message. Um, I do take care of people that give me ideas. Uh, you know, if I'm if I'm standing to make some money, I'm going to let that person make some money too. So if you have ideas, let me know. I got uh, an idea. Perfect. Don't t don't tell me yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, stop me. I think we lost Mike. Yeah, you? I had a phone call coming in. My daughter was coming in. So this tool I've actually really enjoy, and I probably use it in more doors than I'm supposed to. Um, I used to carry your really original your your original door jammer has been in my bag, and I've been using it for years and years and years. Um, and I actually, I think I bought it. Did I buy it from Dentcraft? Maybe I don't remember where who I bought it from. Um, Let's see if I can get to a charger. I think I'm going to run out of charge, and we got some time left here. I think. But if if you guys don't have one of these, Oops. I used to use this Steck hood jammer or trunk jammer, charger? and it was absolutely terrible. You would get it in there, and it would move around and, and shake. This thing locks in really, really well. Um, really fits the need that I that I need, you know, for what I use on the daily. The other thing that I really like is Mike's customer service is top notch. Um, I had an issue with one of these, and I sent them an email right from their website because I just felt like it would be, you know, a little quicker to them. Not a Facebook message because I hate when I get Facebook messages for work. So I sent them an email on a Friday night. And at 1130, I'm laying in bed with my wife. And he calls. And I'm like, who is this calling from California? So I pick it up. And it's Mike. And, and we're talking and explaining to him what happened. And no questions asked. Mike says, I'll get one in the mail. Send me your address. And I say this time and time again about tool manufacturers in our industry. They're not getting rich. They're not millionaires. They're the customer service in our industry and it's super niche industry is like no other industry out there. It really isn't. So you guys need to remember when, when you're buying some of these tools that they're going to stand behind them. You know, I mean, you were, you were quick. I'm sorry if you hear this storm. It sounds like we've got a, a massive thunderstorm coming through, maybe some hail. Oh, but, nice. Um, but no, your customer service was on point. You know, I, I really appreciate it, and, and I was very satisfied. I mean, I, shit, I think it was here in two days. So, I'm sorry. I'm looking for a plug to plug my phone in. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I'm just. I don't. I don't want to die on you. Um, I'm walking around the whole house here looking for a way to charge my phone. 
So um, with I, I might, might just have to take it off this stand here. Let me take so with this one. prop and lock. It's all billet aluminum. Um, oh, I can't see you anymore. It, it locks in really, really well in the car. Um, Can you still see me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can get this thing charging. And what I really enjoy about this prop and lock is the adjustability of it, and the it's the length compared to what I was using before. So, great job on this prop and lock, man. I thank you. I, that took a I, that took a long time to design. Um, we went through several different designs. A lot of people have probably asked or wonder why I didn't make it in a tube. So kind of like a, a hood prop. Oh, cool. We uh, lost power. That's awesome. Well, you didn't lose power. I can still see you. I got a, I got a, gen, a whole house generator, so it kicked going. Wow, look at you. Big high roller so, there. Now, there was like some 106-year-old lady that lived here, so she couldn't lose power. So we moved into that luxury <laughs> <laughs> nice nice we don't lose power rarely ever here we do i have a house out on a lake and uh we use, we lose power out there quite a bit uh we don't have a whole house generator though but we just so feel. in your manufacturing process are you doing most of that in-house we do 95 percent of everything in house. Um, if we have to sub it out, we're losing money. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's not a ton of money to go around. Um, we don't want to sub it out. I mean, I know, I know you look at, you think about the problem lock is $220. Um, most of my sales are all wholesale. So, you know, every once, you know, we'll get hits, you know, through the website and we'll sell through the website and we win. Right. Cause we do, yeah. we get full $220 for it, but there's a big margin that goes to, to distributors. So, you know, and the, we're not, we're not getting rich off it. I, I know it's expensive $220 for a way to prop open your hood opposed to a $25 hood prop and a $10 yeah, but, strap. But let me tell you as a field tech that uses this thing all the time, and like I said, I use it indoors where you're really, it's not a door jammer, but I use it. Right. The difference of a, of a panel that's moving around like it was on the stack door jammer compared to yours, night and day difference. Well, that's, night and day difference. So that was my pet peeve uh, back when I was a dent tech was putting that stupid wing nut stack door jammer in. And it really, it helped, but it didn't really help. If you mm -hmm. know what I mean, you know, it's still clanking around in the door and I'm sitting yeah. on the ground with my knees, you know, wedged in between the door. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was the worst thing our industry had, you know, that, that they offered. It, it was, it didn't really do much. And for me, it was, I waited too long to, to design that. I think I designed that in 2010. So it was in my head for eight years before I actually went out and made that, designed it, and came out Yeah, that, with that. that original door jammer, like I said, I've had for years, four years, because it worked awesome. And it still you know, does. If, if it yeah. breaks, send it back. We'll give you a new one. Like I said to you, I said, I remember using a pair of vice grips with a hoop welded onto the handle. You know, I mean. That's, that's what I did. I got, I threw out the, uh, the stack door jammer and I went, you know, down to Home Depot and I bought a set of vice grips. Uh, I, I grinded down the teeth a little bit so yep. it didn't ruin, you know, ruin the, the hook. And then I welded on a little O-ring to it and that was better than what we were using. It wasn't, yeah. it still shook. The door still shook around, but that was better than what we were using. Um, but yeah, I mean, door jammer was number one on my list to make. And then same with the prop and lock that had been in my head for just as long. Um, but we were so busy doing other things that I really didn't do what my passion was. And I'm sorry if it looks like I have a halo over my head, but <laughs> look at that. I'm definitely not an, angel. I'm not an <laughs> angel, but, um, you know, that sat around for a long time too. And just, we, we had been so busy over the years, uh, 
doing what we do uh, with our with our distributors and the different people that we work with that that kept us plenty busy. Um, and then as things started to die off, uh, it gave me time to do what I wanted to do. And that was to put pencil to paper and start drawing out ideas that were in my head and then actually putting them into 3d drawings and then into CAD and then onto our machines. And that's what I'm trying to do more of these years. These, you know, the past few years is, is stuff like that. That's why you see, I came out with the edge pliers, the panel pliers, mm -hmm. the prop and lock, the tailgater, um, that's actually a cool tool. I really I held one of those at Anson. It's another and, and, and I don't know if you guys realize that all of this stuff that he has is billet aluminum. It's milled aluminum. And this isn't a light, I mean, this thing's got some weight to it. You know what I mean? It isn't it, it's not something cheaply made. So that tailgate is the same way. It's all aluminum. It, it looks, I, I can tell you, I can tell everybody right now, two tools I'm buying at MT right off the bat, the tailgater and the edge pliers. Because I was using those and originally thought that they were for both. Yeah, you'll I was be having, happy. I was you'll having happy. trouble with that, really grabbing it at that weird angle, trying to get that edge out. So well, you're going to pinch your nipple off. I know. What is up with that? What's going on? That's a Vince thing. Vince, we, we <laughs> fixed that problem. I mean, we you're rounded right. off the edges and fixed that you're problem. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's funny. Um, you, you'll be much more comfortable with the edge pliers. You know, you really got to own both of them and you, yeah. you don't have to, but to really understand and appreciate them, if you own both of them, you get it. Um, and we do have a new product coming out that's going to attach to both the edge plier and the panel plier. So we have that. extensions that we're coming out with. I don't have pictures of them. I can't show it to you. I have them. I just, you got to come by and see us at booth 1712 at MTE in Vegas. So if you're out, come by and check it out. Um, it's got a wider bridge, an adjustable bridge, and it's going to give you four more inches of reach. So on your edge pliers, you're going to go to six inches of reach. And on your panel pliers, you're going to go to eight inches of reach. And we're also working on a, I hope we get it done in time, but we just haven't had the machine time. We're working on an extension for the prop and lock. So we're going to be able to extend it even more so if you're on hatchbacks and you want to put that hood up that hatchback excuse me up higher yeah you'll be able to open it up even higher and get it more at eye level um it's not going to be really for doors or hoods but it, you know a lot of people came to me and said man this thing it needs four to eight more inches so when i'm working on a hatchback or like on a minivan or suv they can get that hatchback up high enough to work on it where it was you know it's it only opens up to about 20 21.5 inches i believe mm -hmm. it just doesn't get the the it up high enough and people are looking for a little bit a little bit more so we're trying to get that done hopefully it's ready for mte um i'm hoping so open. so scott was asking um it looks like somebody's already asked about the prop and lock will it be making extensions or are you going to make something that adds to the lift I guess that's exactly what he's talking about is a lift gate. Yep. Extension. So, I just, so, so I just explained that. So, well, look, yep, look at that. looks like we're at least Thank we're getting them answered without even getting the questions. There so you go. we're getting on it, man. That's what it's all about. I love this. I love uh, this live feed is awesome. Uh, your booth at MT. Let's get into that. What kind of theme you have going on and, and what you're, you know, are you doing any deals for MT? No deals. I mean, it costs us a lot of money to get there. Um, I wish I could discount everything. I can't. I have distributors. Uh, if I went, what up? What does it say? Scato? Yeah, Is that's that that's our that's John Scato from from Boston. Got gotcha. you. So there's there's not going to be any deals. I don't think you're going to find any deals at MTE. Everything's going to be the retail price for the most part. Um, it just, it costs us a ton of money to go there. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, if I went there and I undercut all my distributors by 20%, I probably wouldn't have any more distributors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd, I'd be getting a phone call. 
Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, Scott. Um, you know, so I can't do that. Um, yeah. But what we are doing, what the theme is at the, at the show, it's it's a military theme. Um, so all our tools are done in the olive drabs and flat blacks, and they're done with that new Ranger logo, the B&D Ranger logo. They're limited just for the show. You're only going to be able to get them at the show. If, if you're at the show and, and you don't get one, we might have, you might be able to order them after. We'll see how it goes. If there's going to be enough, you know, if we run out and I just don't have enough to go around because we're not bringing tons of them. It, like I said, it is limited. We might do it, you know. I can't read it. What does that say? Smart water. I'm trying to think of good questions. Um, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> drinking mine, but you know, the, the limited line is what it is. It's limited. It's that army theme, the Ranger theme. Uh, we're also given a percentage of all our sales to the wounded warrior project. And that's, that's awesome. The reason, that's the reason for the theme. Um, you know, we want to get back. You know, we want to try to help this great country and give back, you know, and I don't think enough of us really give back to the, our veterans. No. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. I, I've never donated to anything uh, that's veteran or military at all. I've donated money to, you know, schools and, and things like that and gala events and things, things like that, but never to our military. So I'm pretty excited to do that. Um you know, I, 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 I'm excited. I don't know what, what else to say. I mean, other than. And it, have you ever had a booth at MTE before? I haven't. Uh, first time going out to MTE uh, this year in January is at the Orlando MTE show. I just kind of cruised all my vendor, all my, excuse me, all my distributor booths. Um, really, I was just kind of in the way. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd go out there and be, you know, walking around. Hey, you know, got any questions and whatnot, but I was just in the way. So I just kind of cruised the show and hung out. And So the the attachments that you're talking about having for some of these tools, are the guys going to be able to test them out at the PDR tool time booth? That's a good question. Um, I have orchestrated with Vince and Daniel over at PDR tool time. And they obviously have a huge space uh, that they're bringing in some rental cars, I believe. Shh, don't tell mm -hmm. the rental car companies that we're <laughs> be putting dents in them. Um, but I've already told Vince that I'm bringing over everything I got. It's going to be lasered PDR tool time. So hopefully they don't walk away. I'm pretty sure our industry is not going to allow that to happen. Um, and, and they're theirs. I mean, I don't, if they walk away, they walk away. But Oh, they're walking uh, away. <laughs> they're probably going to fit away. nicely in my luggage. I wouldn't doubt if Vince is going to auction them off. You know, they, they don't make any money doing that. Just like, you know, you don't make any money doing this pod, yeah. this live cast. Um, and it costs money. I mean, I see a yeah. big, huge microphone right there that had to cost some money. Yeah. Is that what that is? That Yeah, this, this is a microphone. Yeah, that thing's huge. Yep. Or it's really close to the camera, but. Yeah, it's close. Um, but I mean, they don't make money doing that. So when when you see people like me or edgy or whatever, giving them a hundred dollars or whatever it is a month for a sponsorship, it's really just to help them out to keep it alive. We want to see it keep going. Yeah. Um, I mean, do I get much out of it? Not much. I mean, I get my logo put up and they mention my name. I don't get much out of it. I'm not expecting it to change my sales or anything. I'm really doing it as a donation to them. Uh, yeah, I appreciate what they do for the industry. Uh, they don't have to do it. It it's free for everybody to listen and 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 hear, and they bring good things and positive vibes. Uh, that's why I do it. I mean, I I know some of the other guys do it too. Yeah, do I do I hope I can pick up a sale here and there from it? Sure. Am I? I don't know. <laughs> I think I, I think a lot of it, a lot of these shows and YouTube videos and Facebook reviews. It's nice now because I get a review on a tool before I spend a hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars on something. You know, it's it's just I, nice. I agree, man. Man, I would hate to buy a pair of fender pliers and get it home, and it sucks. And I mean, that would that wouldn't be cool. I mean, I want to I want to touch, feel, taste. I want to I want to touch it, man. I want to. 
I want to make sure it's something I want and I need. I yeah. Mean, and know, like I just said, I, I made the mistake. I bought this because I thought I could use both. And you can. It, they, it works for both. But I, I just think as many door edges as I do, the edge pliers are going to be my answer. You know what I mean? And I, I still use these. I used this two days ago on a aluminum Ford bedside by the taillight. So it looks like we lost Mike. So I'm sure we, Scott, I'm sure I can get some fender pliers over there for the uh, PDR tool time booth, which I, I think is a great idea. I think it's an awesome idea. Here's Mike. He's coming back. Sorry, brother. There he Sorry, is. Sorry, brother, man. So I, I was talking about the PDR tool time booth. What a great idea it is that you're allowed to try these tools. You know, I think it's, I, I, I hope all the manufacturers and, you know, work with them on that whole thing and, and you can try whatever you like. I mean, obviously you can't go to the dent craft booth and want to try 38 of their tools that are up on the wall, but I, I think it's a great idea. I would, I would bet you, if you ask Richard, Oh yeah. Or dent craft, hey Richard, can I try that tool? I'll guarantee you he's going to hand you the tool. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You're right. I, I don't he's know. He's got some fresh bits, uni bits over there too. I, so I know dent craft and their hospitality and the way they are, the professionalism with them. If I know them and I know Richard and I know, you know, the people over there, they're go for it. Yes. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to try out a fresh uni bit that they have on the wall over there on that rental car. That's in Daniel's name. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, are they bringing the one that does actually hogs out a three quarter inch? <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't enough room to get my halo rod in there. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, so no, I, I think I think of, you know you're gonna get most of the guys, most of the companies bringing stuff over you. Why wouldn't you bring something over to them? Exactly. I. I I highly suggest if you're a tool company and you're watching this, take your tool over at PDR Tool Time and give it to them and it's theirs and just rack it up as part of the cost of having a booth. Um, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I yeah. don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, I just don't. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it would behoove you to take whatever you make over to them and let them let people play with that stuff because then they're going to go, they're right over there. They're going to point over at your booth and you're going to get a sale out of it. I guarantee it. I mean, it, I, I love the fact that they're doing it. And once again, they're doing it. They're not getting any money out of it. You know, they get nothing from that. I mean, at least as far as I know, they get some free tools. Maybe I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, free tools uh, that, they don't, that they don't need. I mean, I've been to, you know, Vince's shop. He has tons of tools. Um, that he's paid for probably most of them, some of them free, but I mean, if that, is that what he's getting out of it, a free tool people don't realize to. I had this conversation with Mike Toledo to do those tool reviews. Say you do a tool review on YouTube. It takes a lot of time. You know, it isn't something that you can wham, bam and flam it out there. You know, it, it takes a lot of time to do the footage, do the editing. Then you have to do use, you know, company logos and figure out what they want you to use. And there's a lot involved in those videos. So it, I agree. It, you get a free tool, but man, let me tell you at the end of the day, you do a review on this, say this is a tool and it's 200 bucks. You've got more than two hours in the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know prior just leading up to our interview here, we talked five times. Yeah. And you wanted logos and things like that from me. Yeah. I mean, you, you got some time into me, invested in me. And I, I'll I'll tell everybody right now, I did not give Ryan any free tools. I'm I sorry, bought brother. everything here. I'm sorry, brother. I'm a supporter. Hey, I, <laughs> I, I say this all the time, and this is one reason I decided to do this show was, you know, um, I didn't want to have sponsors. I didn't want to have, you know, just a bunch of, free stuff sent over here. I'm doing it for the guys that are watching this that, you know, want to have this information, want to know how B and D 
tools came about or James from a limit end or, you know, all these guys, that's the questions these guys want to hear. And the other thing is when I started doing the giveaways, I want to give back to these guys that, that are out there every single day, grinding it out and are spending money on tools. So yeah. I appreciate guys like you that are like, Hey, let's do a giveaway. You know, and we're giving yeah, away a $225 tool. So, you know, I'm super lucky that I have manufacturers and, and guys in the industry that um, want to be involved and make things like that, you know, an option. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, there's there's guys like me, there's guys like Chad Peters, and I, I mean, we're invested. I mean, we, we want to bring new stuff to the industry. We, you know, we want to, that's what we live for. I mean, yeah. I know Chad, I've talked to him and he knows me and I've stayed up all night long trying to figure out a problem and figure through the prop and lock issues that I've had with it and panel plier issues. I mean, this stuff looks easy. Once you get it in your hand, it looks like we just popped it out of our butt and it just was there. I mean, it was that easy. It's not, I mean, the little, the, the little nuances of the tool that make the tool right are the hard things and you just don't get it until you're trying to design it and do it. I mean, your product can either do well or it can fail. Yeah, um, of the course. Only way, the only way for it to do well is to work it through all the different variables um, and make sure it's, you know, you hope that it's bulletproof. Um, I know, like with you, we had an issue. Uh, mm -hmm. What did it? Did the knob break? Well, I yeah. Remember the knob. I broke. was the knob broke off, and I. Now let's be honest. Did you drop it off of a four by four truck or like? Well, like I said before, what I <laughs> this thing it was kind of got jammed, and I kept pulling on the knob, and I couldn't get it to release, and it just snapped off, and I was like, "There's two hundred and twenty five dollars." I looked at Shane, and I was like. What do you, how did that well, happen? Not a problem. We're going to, we're going to replace it if it happens. So it's not a problem. We stand behind our product. I, unfortunately that pull pin knob, I can't buy any beefier it to make, to buy a bigger, heavier, stronger one. I'd have to make the product thicker. So the product's only a half inch wide and we have a five sixteen eighteen 18 threaded hole in there for that to go into. And there's got to, you know, there's got to be some wall left. I mean, the only way to buy another pull pin that would be heavier duty would be to go to a three eighths size pull pin, and that mm -hmm. would make it a heavier duty pin. But, uh, you know, that that prop and lock's already beefy enough. Yeah. I don't want, you know, more material, heavier. We didn't want it to be that way. So, I mean, if you have a problem with it, with it, and it breaks, you know, we're not, we're, we're fine replacing it. I mean, it. You just, were fast the same day. I mean, you were. Ryan, what's going on? Had a break. What you know, blah blah blah. In two days, I had it. Right. Yeah. You, know, you weren't. Was, you weren't like to do to run it over. I didn't you know? even know who you were really when you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I I I remember actually the order coming through when you bought the when you bought it seeing yeah. that name because I mean it's a it's a name that you kind of remember you yeah. know Ryan Shut you know it's not just John Smith. Right. So I kind of remembered it and I'm like, oh, this dude just bought a prop and lock not too long ago. So, yeah, I mean, I was on it. And that's, I try to get, if, if you don't, if you have a complaint or something with our product and you, you email me or call me and I don't get to you right away, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Uh, it, it's possibly I just didn't, the email slipped by me or the phone call slipped by me because I'm out in a noisy machine shop and sometimes things just slip by. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then, it, then I forget about it. So just blow me up and we'll get back to you. I mean, this, this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I mean, it is. I was it like, is. I guess I'll order another one on Monday. <laughs> it, you know what I mean? If it works, it's for me, it's a lot of guys have trouble buying tools. Cause they're like, man, that's like the carbon tech. Perfect example. When I, when I bought the carbon tech the night before MT, I was like, man, this it's like 1800 bucks. You know, it's, wow. it's a lot. But let me tell you, I'm making the wrong product. It's it. It's made its money. It really has, and and that's what I look at all this stuff. I you know, is this going to make my life easier, faster, and is it going to be a better repair? Right. So yeah. I mean, you got to invest. Uh, 
when you think about it, dent guys, hail techs, we really have a small investment. When you think about it, you have no overhead really to speak mm -hmm. of a little gasoline and a car payment, um, your tools. I mean, that's what you, that's all you got to buy. I mean, okay. Some glue every once in a while and some tabs. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, you really don't have much of an overhead unless you have a big shop, you know, like Toledo cabin. I see has a huge shop. That's John, John Scott. Uh, Toledo just did a, a, a bunch of live feeds from John's shop up in Boston when he was there last week. And that place looks sick too. You know, there's some really, really nice shops out there. Well, the fender pliers work just as well on Dora just, so I guess, I guess Scott missed that the first part of our, yeah about that um the the fender pliers will the fender pliers work just as well on doors well that yeah the fender pliers uh give you a funky angle because of the angle of it they will work yeah i mean yeah they they will work it just kind of gives you a little bit of angle so uh, it's not almost... so bad with the fender pliers the fender pliers are going to be really awkward on a hood because it's going to put you if way up uh, at a weird angle on a hood but yes they will to answer your question they they will work i feel like the the edge pliers have you know because of the shorter throw there's just more power for a door edge and, and you know i i caution you when you're pushing with these things do be careful not to overpower because you can <laughs> leave, yes you can leave dents from the feet and then you're coming back in and having the fixed dance on the other side. So be careful. Um, and I have I have used this for door edges since Anson. So it, it can. But Scott, I, you know, really, I, like I said, I, I think you need both. You know, if, if I do a ton of edges. So like I said, that's going to be probably the first tool that I pick up at, at MTE is the edge pliers. Because I do so many door edges. Um well, but yeah, how do you do so many door edges? I mean, that, what, so I, I have a, a couple body shops, a couple body shops that, that service all the U-Haul trucks in the area. So when they turn them back, it's kind of like rental turnbacks. So they go to my body shops, and there's back doors on the transits. If this door shuts first and this door hits it, it's folding the edge. Mm. Gotcha. So I get yeah, it. I mean, Door edges are, you, you know, you do run into them, but not, what, what, I'm trying to read this. It's Scott, I was saying, once you invest itself. in yourself. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely. Yeah, I agree. It's just like Sorry, I was saying on, on the face. I'm, I'm on a little phone, so. Yeah. And my eyes are like trying to focus on writing that's an eighth inch tall. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, and I said this on my live feed on Facebook. You're welcome, Scott. Um, just like the IMI training, the hybrid training that Anson and, and TDN is doing. If you don't have that training, it is, for one, a safety thing. For two, a moneymaker. You know, I'm not getting questioned even a little bit about any of it. Um and I've just about made all of my money back that I paid for the training. Well, what so, is it? Six hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks? Yeah, it's, I think it was. I think it's down to six fifty now. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's, not, it's not that much. I mean, no. And, it, and if you're out there touching electric cars, don't do it. Yep. I mean, yep. do and not I, do it. It's not worth killing yourself over making fifty bucks or a hundred or two hundred, even a thousand, even if you're getting paid ten grand to do that car. You could possibly kill yourself. I mean, and I and I up, used to sign up with Anson, get yeah. get it done. They're doing a live. They're doing a training at MTE, so they're doing the morning in the classroom, and then are doing the live power down actually inside the show. Right. So that'll be cool for a lot of guys to kind of see what it takes. And and well, I did it at Anson Open House. I don't think enough guys out there know that you know you could be severely hurt yeah. or killed. I don't, you know. And they're just ram, you know, going in there and putting some rods in there, and man, terrifies you know, me. Six hundred to a thousand volts of power, and it's going to blow the tool out of your hand, and hopefully you don't die. Yes, and I, I used to do them before I powered them down. We just had a a Model S 
and the tech, it was a dent and a quarter, not far from the charging port. And, uh, he just unplugged the battery in the front and he goes, well, it's powered down. I'm like, you're wrong. I'm not fixing <laughs> that thing like that. Yeah. The motors are powered down. Yeah. Batteries are still sitting there. Not, yeah. you know, with live cables. You know, I'm lucky because service King, which is a large body shop brand over here. They're, they're the Tesla repair facility. And, you know, um, I can get all the power down directly from Tesla. So I print them out, I laminate them and I stick them in my thing. So I just pulled them out and I was like, you're, you're wrong. I, I'm not touching it till we do this. So, yeah. But if you so guys want to do it to the show and you don't know, now, you know, <laughs> yeah, sign up, pay the six fifty, whatever it is. You're uh, going to make it not, back. And it's not, what is it? It's a four hour class or something yeah. like that. It's not very long. Then you can do a little test at the end. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. That if I long. passed, anybody passes. <laughs> You're not giving yourself enough credit there. So you, you throw on the rubber club. That's it. And learn how to little face down. mask. Face mask, rubber gloves. You know. Get the hook so out. So you, what's the future B and D? We're starting to run out of time here. Yeah, we're already over an hour. Uh, yes. Future of BD is we're hoping what we're shooting for and things don't happen fast. Um, we're coming out with a new line of tools. So rods and brace tools and stuff. Uh, we're starting small. We're going to come out with first, we got to get through our design of our interchangeable tools with a ratcheting handle. So we're going over to full blown. I think it's going to be 36 position ratchet with an interchangeable tool set. So it won't be like we're going to have 60 tools, bam, right now. So mm -hmm. you'll probably see eight to 12 tools come out set, you know, in, in like little sets or you can buy them individually, but we got, we're still in the design phase mm -hmm. of the ratcheting handle. So over the top B and D type stuff, I'll bill it, uh, extensions will go on these handles there will be foam there'll be some foam grips on it for comfort uh full-blown b and d style and you know what we do we do it over the top mm -hmm. you know everything's billet and we probably over design um we want when we release something we want it to be the best that we know how to do um and then usually we send it out for for testing and people come back and say well if you just did this it would be better and if we Pins can, we'll make those, yeah, if we can, we'll make those, we'll make those tweaks. If we can't, we won't. Uh, but you know, it's not, it's not easy. And I'm sure John Hiley can contest to this coming out with his gorilla grip yeah, uh, tool to make the, the splines on a ratchet and, uh, his guys got to come on and off to ratchet, but not completely off, but to make one that's ratcheting like the a one where you just push the button in the back and it ratchets. Uh, to get all the splines right, to get it so it's not loose and wobbly, and then to add add more into it to have tools that attach and detach to it. So not only will the handle, you know, be rotating, articulating, or, or you know, have different th 36 degrees of rotation to it, you're going to be able to take the actual rod off from the handle and use it on other matching equipment. That's so, a great idea. Well, I mean, I don't think it's anything new. I mean, it's not going to be earth shaking, groundbreaking. Um, it's just going to be done the B and D way. Uh, you know, I know a one, I know a one, uh, you know, that or a one, excuse me. I know ultra, you know, has detachable mm -hmm. tools and they have, I don't believe they have a ratcheting handle that I know of, but they have that, you know, they have their full line where, you know, you have the uh, different tools that you mm -hmm. can attach to their handle, you know, beautiful stuff. They make really nice yeah. stuff. I, I like, I like ultra stuff. Um, nice and shiny and, and clean, but, uh, we're going to try to take it to another level. You know, cool. The, the, B, the B and D billet aluminum way. So I'll throw ultra that. High. I like but that. Anyway, I like the billet. Just to shout out again, don't forget MTE. Um, Go buy all your favorite vendors. You're going to see Anson has Viper skins and all the other good stuff that they sell. 
Uh, you're going to be able to go to PDR Tool Time and try out new tools. You can come by my booth, get yourself a free Cooley Cup Army Edition. Yeah, what is this Camel. Cooley Cup? What do you? What do you? What is a Cooley Cup? You know that it goes around your beer and it keeps it cold. Oh, Cooley okay. Cup, those little neoprene things. Oh, like a uh, koozie. Thinking, you'll be a, a koozie. There you go, a koozie cup. Okay. We call them Cooley Cups, but koozie cups. Gotcha. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Dean King's going to have some special on some new lights that they have coming out. Go by and check that out. Grab a beer from them. Talk to them. Uh, who else? Uh, David Schlemmer from Dent Stuff will be there. Yeah. He'll have a full line of his carbon stuff. Uh, also, he's going to have all the B&D stuff there in his colors, which is the orange and black. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I may have to and buy them from really David. Crazy. Yeah, I don't do it. I don't do <laughs> <laughs> No, it is. It's really cool. His that you know his orange that he's got. Yeah. I mean, it's orange and black. I did them all up sweet for him. Um, that stuff should be popular. Uh, you know, then everybody else that's selling my stuff will have it in the you know the standard blues and reds that we carry it in. Um, so if I think if, Dent Wizard's gonna be there. Uh, if if people have any DRX. questions or ways to get a hold of you, what's the best way to contact you? Facebook or Instagram? What's your? I'll give you. I'll give you my my personal number. Um, it's seven one four seven four two zero five two zero. That goes directly to my cell phone. Uh, feel free to call me if you have any questions. If you want to order something, if you want something personalized, and you want to order it, uh, we'll do personal laser. Uh, you know, we'll do your name on there. Um, feel free to give me a call. There is a charge for it, but, uh, I mean, if, good show. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's going to be at MTE. I just, I, I can't push it enough. I hope dent techs go. Yeah. Um, first, first time in, in the West, uh, if you can't make it and you're looking for B&D product or another product out there that's sold by somebody else, give us a call. Give any any company a call. I'm sure they'll be willing to help you. I'll be willing to help you out if you're looking for a B&D product. If you know you're not going to be able to make it out to MTE Vegas and you're wanting one of the limited edition products that we have, uh, give me a shout. We'll take your call. We'll take your order. Um, however we can help. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. I know... Everybody else in the industry is the same way. I mean, you're going to get customer service. Give Craig over at Anson a call or Christina or whoever, Justin or whoever is over there or mm -hmm. Dustin. I can't remember if it's Dustin or Justin, but um, Dent Craft, you've got questions, call them. They're happy to, to take your call. A1, same way, John over there and Maria over at A1. Um, I mean, that's just where this industry is at. We're all trying to help each other and, and, and make it as good as we can. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you, whoever chimed in there i appreciate the uh the props for the good show um, so how we're going to do this giveaway um what we're going to do is we, we kept everybody on for an hour and 13 minutes <laughs> to tell yep. them how to get the oh man we should be shot so what we're going to do is they have to go to your facebook page like your facebook page like not my, not my personal one. I know no, the B and D tools. The B and D, and you know what was weird? I noticed today. I think I got hacked. I couldn't find it. It's there. I got to go back. Is, is it there? But there's two. That's, I couldn't yeah. find the. I couldn't find the right one. That's it. Yep. Okay. So something was up with my phone. So yeah, go to go his like my page. Like his page. Uh -huh. Like my uh, RPS Den Specialist page. And then you have to comment on this video after the live chat, Kymat B and D tools, and then Monday at eight o'clock, I'm gonna go live on Facebook and announce the winner. I'm gonna put it in a generator, let it generate, and whoever wins, Mike will get that in the mail out to you, and and uh, and, do, and don't forget, we're gonna personalize it for the other, person. So get so me your rough, info. Yes. I'll get it to Mike. Um, and it's your limited edition, so they'll have it before anybody at MTE. They will be the only ones that have it, right? They're going to get it right around MTE time, maybe a couple days early. So they'll be the first. Uh, I'll even 
I'll even inscribe it with zero one on it. So they'll See, get look at their that. name with zero one on it. Golden man. That's gonna be cool. Lucky really. ducks. Look at that. Yeah. I'll send you well zero zero. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I appreciate, I appreciate the stuff you make. You know, I had, I had one issue. You rectified it really fast. I really appreciate the customer service. I appreciate you coming on. I I'm glad we got to talk five times before the show. Cause we got to know each other now, you know? Um, Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That, that, you know, that, and that's, that's where this industry, where we're trying to take it and everybody's trying to take it is everybody getting to know each other and sharing their thoughts and, expanding this industry i mean it's been such a hush hush industry for the last 25 years right yes it's like i'm hiding over here doing my dance and i'm hiding making my tools and and it, it it's not really that way anymore and that it's great man i love it I love the networking it, the networking end at mt is going to be awesome this year i think um you know it, it's just going to be a different show it's going to be different thank you so, Thank you. Uh, Best door uh, camera ever. I, it. I appreciate you coming on. Um, it was a really good show. I'm glad we could get some of the, uh, you know, questions down and some of your new stuff that's coming out. So I appreciate it. Um, I know these guys appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we, we've got one more show next week here, and I'm actually going to do a live show from MTE. So should be hey and i might give something away live at mt on your show look at that look at that yeah, just <laughs> look at this. gotta come by my booth though we'll put something together how about that we'll we'll put something we'll together put there something together. I'm, I'm sure. so i appreciate you guys watching and uh remember hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel we've got a lot of stuff going on this year some some new changes coming too but I appreciate you guys watching. And remember, guys, keep it real. See you next week. And level up those tools, as somebody else would say. Thank <laughs> you very much. Have, have a good night.